Hi guys, uh, good uh, morning. And uh, once again, you are welcome to Cartridge Solution Plays and Academy. My name is Tilimembi Odutala DTM. In here, we give you in depth information about cartridge farming, how to get, how to prepare yourself, how to be a professional on cartridge farming. Maybe there are some questions or really what you really want to know about cartridge farming. Make sure that you watch most of our video on cartridge uh, farming, related to cartridge farming, and you get answers to them all. My name once again is Trimen Biodo DTM. Today is the 13th of uh, November 2021. Once again, this is a part two of my video uh, that I post yesterday that I titled Harvest and Mentorship at Aridria Farm in uh, Abeokuta, Ogun State. That is the capital of Ogun State. That is where we are here to we are today. And uh, as you can see from this video, uh, from my previous video, we are we are, have inspected virtually the two uh, ashray house, and I've tested the water, and the water is probably okay. Uh, but today I'm testing the uh, brewstock section of it, which I will like to know uh, how the grade of their blue stocks because uh, they have close about 300 blue stocks on ground for the ashtray process and uh, after then we will be mentoring and be asking questions on relatively activities that have been happening in the farm before uh, before and before we are going on on this uh, i will be going more further on this video i would like you to press on the subscription button which is uh, by the right side the red right subscription button at your video as watching for now and uh, if you can't locate it go up to your screen go to your screen the right the left side of your screen the down left side of your screen you will see a subscription button is an automated uh, subscription button just click on it and uh, you will be subscribed to the channel immediately so what you can see me doing presently is one where i'm trying to see the booster that has been been injected uh, before i arrive at the farm in the morning and i discover that the booster have uh, they, they are uh, they are almost about 150 percent ready what did i mean by this is that by the time i will get there they have splitted most of their eggs out most of the eggs is outside and uh, they are they are they are uh, has discovered that they there is no water inside which i asked questions and i was told that that is how the person that trained them on actually taught them to do and again this is a triple error for any actual process if you are the type that is still uh, doing such a mistakes make sure that you stop doing it it's only when you want to start your uh, spawning process that means your massaging process a uh, stripping process that is when you can remove your egg uh, your blue stalks your female blue stalks from the water make sure that your female blue stalk is in the water after you might have removed the sperm after you might have removed the sperm and be sure that your sperm that means the mint is very very good then you have to reduce the water where the female blue stalks is and remove it gently to an empty bowl that you can start your stripping process why this is that one it will make your female blue stalk still be relaxed not be shocked and stressed once your female blue stalk is stressed and the egg is stressed there's a probability of you of having a zero uh, potential eggs so make sure that all these are some of the mistakes that we breeders do we don't really care of some things which are or may relatively affect our fish by the end of the day so because this is already done what i need to do now is one i need to start my process but before i do the process i would like to see the water and then i would like to put kakaban into the nursery pond so now what i want to do is that because the female fish is ready and our male fish are ready so before i could remove the mint i will have to check the water from the incubator 
and I will have to spread the cargo band into the incubator and I will have to check the temperature at present so that you can use that to guide ourselves to control the latency period and the incubating period. So uh, as you can see in the video, the latency period is uh, virtually due. So we should be looking at the incubation period now. And another thing is that what I'm checking is the net, the outlet. The net of the outlet should be well secured that when the fryers start coming out, you should not allow any of them to come out. Because if you use a bigger net that has a bigger hole, if you are not careful, your fryers may come out. That is why sometimes people, in case of a uh, and making sure that they prevent that most people do use what we call the chiffon net that means the muslin scarves and the uh, clothes that they use in saving pubs but if you are not using that one of the best material to use is your white net with small holes but in order to prepare to uh, guide against uh, any kind of uh, risk or occurrence of uh, losing your uh, little fryers, uh, little by little, that you may not know because sometimes when you have like 50,000 pieces of uh, newly hatched fryers in your pond and you are doing flow through, the uh, team should be coming, the fryers will be coming out one, five, six, ten, and by the end of the day, in two, three days, you might have lost close to about 30 or 40 percent of it. So, the what we are trying to do now is one. Uh, to make sure that we test the water that is coming out from the storage tank to test with the water from the incubator to still make sure that we have the accurate water we are looking at that means the ph of a uh, seven uh, so that is what we are doing now so after testing it i discover that the water parameters is okay because we have done all the testing and it's perfectly okay so it's now time to take our thermometer to i will use a thermometer to test the temperature so that i can use that in order to ascertain the incubating uh, period which is very very important because one your weather uh, the atmospheric weather and the uh, temperature do correct your uh, incubating period that is what really collects control your latency period and your incubating period and if you don't know about this, make sure that you get my books on um, catfish, ashray, and fries management, you, which you can read to details some of this information that I'm talking about. And if you think you need a visual video, make sure that you get my video on catfish, ashray, and fries management. In there, there are in-depth information. There are a lot of information that you may be missing out that you need uh, to know. So in this video now, presently, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to lay the kakaban. So there are different kind of kakabans people do use. This is what we call the net a kakaban lane. So we lay this at the edge of the incubator, which you'll be seen to as well. And um, if you are using a very bigger net, what I mean by a bigger net is that a net that the holes are big. So what you do is that you can double it, double the net so that by the time the uh, fryers is coming out, the bad eggs will not come out into your incubator. This is very, very important and uh, very, very important. So make sure that you take this to uh, understanding too as well. Because they are this white black mosquito net, the holes are very, very big. But if you really want to enjoy it, it's only when you have a bigger fish that has bigger egg than you can. But if you are using a smaller fish, the eggs may be smaller. And most of like 30% uh, of the eggs may drop underneath. Immediately you uh, spray your egg on the kakaban. So what this does is that by the time you maybe by the time you want to lift your head after like a 32 hours uh, use and you have a lot of uh, white eggs at the base there is a risk of you of having a polluted water if you can't control it and if you can't control it there's a tendency of you losing out all your fishes or you may lose out 70 to 80 percent of your fishes to pollution 
that means if you can control pollution so in order to avoid pollution your steps from the start really matters a lot why is really matter a lot it matters one because you need to make sure that the kakaban that means the net you are using to lay your egg that means the legs you are using for your incubating the exercise the holes should not be that big and if you discover the holes are big or you are using this kind of a net you can see in this video make sure that you double the net so the process as you are watching is still going on and uh, what we are doing is that we are using three tanks they are six incubator in this place so we'll be using three incubators for the archery process and by the time they are removing the net they'll be putting the net into the three other tanks so why is this is that and what you are watching now is uh, i'm using the thermometer to test the water to see the temperature of the water in order to control my uh, incubating period and control my archery process as we all know that the temperature that i needed presently is a temperature between 26 to 30 percent that's what i use i don't know what other people uses but i control my to 26 to 30 uh, 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 centigrade so that is what i use so uh, what i have here is i have 28 centigrade so by the time we locked up the uh Ashley room i'm saying i will be uh, I, will, I think the temperature should be going down so that is what i needed so after testing it i have to lay the other net i have to lay the other net so that's what you are seeing so if you are using this kind of a system i said earlier on there are lot and different types of kakaban there's a floating kakaban there's a kakaban with uh where well, there's a kakaban with uh the laying one, the floating one, the round one, the one with uh, aluminium uh, uh, frame, there's the one with the leaf frame, there's the one with the bamboo frames, all kakaban that you think can be used and preferable for you. There's the one with the sack, the one, the tear sack uh, that they use. So a lot of kakabans depend on what is really suitable for you. But the most easiest one is to me is the uh frame the uh, floating kakaban or aluminum kakaban that i use in my ashtray so uh depends on who and who trains you on how or how easier the trainer takes you through which is very very crucial and also very very important i said it earlier that we are presently at abe okuta monitoring the ashtray process restructuring the ashtray process and trying to build up the ashtray process so that we make sure that we get results in our in this archery facility i said earlier in here we have to actually facility and this actual facility is being secured very well secured against controlling the temperature secured against controlling any kind of infection all this is being perfectly done in this ashtray and in here they have six incubator and in the ashtray they have four in a two incubator they are using for their actual process so after then they have the nursery uh, tanks that they will use in nursing uh, the fishes so in here we are having series of questions and answer how the practice has been done before how to make sure that the practice can change how to make sure that we can perfect and give a very good uh, uh, result for our ashtray but the only little error i'm having here is because of the leftover of the female blue stocks that have been left without water for over uh for over four hours uh, more than four or five hours now that i'm really now not really happy about i'm not really happy about that and uh, i think i have asked them to change that and that should be corrected immediately because one one of the female bullstock have released out almost about 20 percent of his egg been struggling and the other one have released close to about uh, close to about 70 um, percent of his egg 
during strug struggling and the stress on them may have relatively uh, much. So what we want to do now is that we will want to remove the mint of the male leg, blue stocks. But I would like to get some of their blue stocks. And in here, I brought in a blue stock for myself. So I will have to use that blue stock for one of the female fishes in order to test, I said from my earlier video, in order to test for the inbreed, maybe uh, they are having inbreed in their blue stocks and then uh, I'll be using one of their own blue stocks too as well to know what really is the problem uh, from the farm. But before I do that, I would like to ascertain if all the process, all the incubators, all the intensives, all the materials that we are using, the facility we are using is being sterilized. And how could you sterilize this? You sterilize through salt. I make sure that everything we are using is being sterilized by salt. That's what I'm doing. I'm making sure that all the bowls, all the spoons, and everything we are using is being sterilized. All these are the best practice we normally talk about in catfish farming. But note once again, I told you one of the best practices have been delayed uh, on the female booster being left over for over five to six hours before arriving at that spot. Leftover, what I mean by leftover is that they are, there is no water on them. They remove the water around 5 a.m. I don't know why that is done. I was told is the uh, person that taught them how to do the hatchery that did that. So that is one of the things that you needed. Uh, is somebody, an expert for, to guide you on uh, the best practice that you can use. You can see me using salt. I'm using my salt in order to sterilize what we are using, all the materials we are using. And we will be using a saline the, a solution in order to prepare our eggs. That's the saline solution you are seeing on the uh, video. So after making sure that all my materials is being sterilized, as you can see, after making sure even I'm trying to sterilize the razor blade I was given, so all this has to be because i'll be using the razor blade to remove the mint of the male blue stalks and i'll be using the razor blade uh, to split the uh, uh, mint into uh, the hex for the fertilization period so what they are doing now is that they are trying to bring out uh, the little the male blue stalks that we brought in order to control or to ascertain they are not using an uh, inbreed and to uh, the species that we bring we are bringing a pure claras uh, species uh, related to the species of a uh, claras that we meant in the farm so what i'm doing now is that i'm trying to release the water and remove the blue stalks so after removing the blue stalks what we'll be doing is that we'll be um, uh, removing the we have to dissect it after dissecting it we need we have to remove the spam so after removing the spam we will have to uh, uh, preserve this farm uh, the spam to wait for the female to be stripped so that is what again we'll be doing to the other females they have but uh, the first thing is that make sure that what all what you are doing in your archery business be just try to do your best practice make sure that all what you are doing is being sterilized all our activities is being sterilized uh, everything you can see me making sure that everything i'm doing is well perfected and everything is well sterilized for any kind of uh, uh, diseases or anything that can affect the nearly fryers fryers are very very fragile I said earlier, I'm telling you about one of the disadvantages of you stressing your blue stocks. Stressing your blue stock is very, very important. Once you stress your blue stocks, you stress the eggs on them. This is very, very crucial and important to which most farmers did not really take care as important. So with that alone, you should be having what we call a zero uh, ashery uh, process. It can give you a zero ashery process if you are not careful enough so what you need to do is that make sure that you don't stress your female blue stocks at all 
even I was telling somebody if you inject your female bullstocks, make sure that the water you are putting on them is almost about 50% above them. So, and you cover the lead very well because one, they are very, very aggressive and you want to jump out, make special spaghetti when they did not hear any noise. That means at night or you keep them in a cool place, they want to jump out. So true jumping out too is a stress for them. So sometimes it's very, very, very advisable for you to put them in a, at least maybe a size of that white tank we are seeing so that they can still feel at home with their injection on them. So by the time you want to do the hash tree, drain the water and take them out. With this, you can be rest assured that you are onto the best uh, practice. So we have, we have just finished removing the mint from the uh, our own uh, male uh, blue stocks. So after removing the mint, we have to wash it with a, a saline solution. And uh, as you can see, the uh, the mint is milky, 100% milky. And so after we might have done that, we need to wash it with a saline solution and preserve it into a saline water if you don't know what we call a saline water saline water are water mixed with salt it mixed with salt and if you want to prepare a kind of a saline water saline solution for yourself i normally advise you to try to maybe if you are sweating once you are sweating taste your sweat just take your tongues and take your taste your sweat so by the time you taste your sweat look at the quantity of the salt you can taste from your salt is from your uh, sweat then use that quantity of salt in that water that is what we call how to prepare your saline solution i may not give you a measurement and that is the, uh, the pure and simple measurement i use for myself so make sure that you get that habit too for those of you that are asking me uh, how do I prepare my saline solution how do I do this so now we want to strip the female blue stocks but this female blue stock I said earlier I've lost nothing less than 30 percent of his uh, uh, of the hex so I can see as you can see that is fighting the next thing to do is that if you can see maybe the cloth they are using to hold it in the other side is slippery and it fall off make sure that you don't let it fall on the floor make sure that you actually locate the container that you brought it from easily so that it can be relaxed close its eyes and start your stripping process back so the stripping process i'm going through now is that because this have released some of his eggs out i'll be stripping out the 70 percent of egg in it uh, out and uh, after stripping it by the time you notice this split of blood you stop you stop it's very very important for you uh, to stop so then after then you uh, you have to do your uh, fertilization process fertilization process is uh, the time that you are putting your meat into it why you are seeing like this is that the egg are over ready and they are split out most of the eggs out so you need to be careful on this two as well make sure that you span as when do make sure that you don't stress your female blue stocks and uh, all this is what you really need to perfect your process so when you started seeing the split of blood make sure that you stop your split, uh, your stripping uh, process so after stopping the stripping process the next thing to do is to is to um take your eggs and start the fertilization uh, process which we will be seeing on this video now so all this process if you need something like this if you need us to come and train you, uh, your workers if you need to come and train your managers if you need to guide you on some certain factors in your farm make sure that you contact us and when do you so that we can schedule you and give you the appropriate time that will be available for me and you so with this 
uh, you can at least gain one or two things and achieve one or two things maybe on informative or other factors so what i'm trying to do on that video is i'm trying to uh, dissect the male fishes and uh, i'm going to mix it for the fertilization process so after this is done the mixing process continues and uh, your mixing process should be at least one minute to two minutes of a sipping process and again by the time uh, you are doing the they are fertilizing they are fertilizing uh, the hex make sure that the mint rests on it for that kind of a period and three make sure that you mix it very well and if you are using a plastic spoon or iron spoon which is not really encouraging make sure that you did not mix it too much mixing it too much may cause a deformation on your fryers uh, for those people that normally ask me that uh, my fishes someone most of them their mouth is bent or their body after their body is bent or their head is bent their tail is bent all these are what we call deformation and what normally causes most of the deformation is your uh the hardship of you uh, stirring and mixing your egg most especially with iron spoon or if you are using a plastic spoon and you are not doing it gently you are doing it roughly with this uh, you can have at least 20 percent of the formed uh, fryers uh, uh, seedlings so make sure that all this is being controlled and uh, make sure that you do your best practice in all time you are doing uh, the business so the next thing to do is now is just to spray so this is the first uh, blue stock we are using the first way blue stocks so the first thing to do is to spray them gently on the kakaban i make sure that if you are spraying on the kakaban make sure that the eggs do not cluster they give them spacing make sure that they do not cluster you have to give them spacing which is very very important space them and don't let them uh, cluster so after doing that we have to spread it to uh, two ponds and we are using the third pond for the other uh, fish to be sprayed note that this first one we did with to guide against uh, in breed we brought a female male blue stocks from lagos uh, to abeokuta to run uh, the exercise so before i go on this video as you are watching for now uh, make sure that you subscribe to this youtube page which is very important make sure that you click on the notification button this will tell you when release new videos on this channel and make sure that you share give us uh, feedbacks and if you see anything wrong in the video make sure that you press on the thumbs down button or you comment these are the encouragement we need giving a negative comment is an encouragement to build more and to do more in anything we are doing and before i go make sure that you get my books my he books and my he video on cartridge farming and the financial management i said earlier on for archery process we have three books on archery process we have the ebook on Cardfish Ashley and Price Management, and we have the e video that means the visual video is an e video that will be sent to your email and you can watch on your phone on your laptop. You can send it to your uh, through Wi Fi to your television set and so on and so forth. That means it's mobile, you can watch it anywhere, unlike CD that can uh, be scratching or can be having problems. And you can now store it into your USB drive your your storage drive to be watching it anytime any day so make sure that you order for a copy of that now and uh, make sure that you order for all our books and we have the one for the common diseases and treatment make sure that you order for that too as well these are the helps and the guide you have for a successful catfish uh, farming so once again we have books on the uh, grow out we have the one on the launch we have the one on spoon catfish we have the one for how to start a successful business. We have the one for business plan and so on and so forth. These are the guides, as simple guides you need to guide yourself 
to be a professional on catfish farming and make sure that you press on the notification button now so that you'll be watching our part three of this video the part three will be coming out tomorrow make sure that you don't miss the part three of this uh, uh, great uh, video these are informative videos that you need Thank you very much. My name is Timmy Biodo on the Total DTM, your anchor on Catfish Solution Plays and Academy, where we give you in-depth information about catfish farming, where we give you guides about catfish farming, where we introduce new technology, techniques on catfish farming, where we open free trainings on catfish farming, where 